Okay, so let's walk through the tension method or the T method to determine the mechanical advantage system. This is probably the most easy and fail-safe method to use so that you'll never uh, miss uh, determine what the uh, mechanical advantage system is. So there's a couple important things to uh, consider here. So one is we've always got to start the calculation at the input side of the mechanical advantage system. So this is where you'd be grabbing onto the rope and doing your hauling. So that's one really important concept. So where is the, uh, the input side? Okay, and then of course over here, here's the load. Okay, so this is our climber over the edge. You can see here's our anchor over here. So what we're trying to figure out is, you know, what is gonna be our output compared to our input. So when we're utilizing the tension method to determine the mechanical advantage system, what we have to remember is that pulleys act as force multipliers. So you can see here we've got two pulleys in this system, the red triangles. So anytime um, a rope, in this case the blue line, goes 180 degrees around through a pulley, okay, whatever tension was on that rope, it's going to be multiplied you know, by two on the other side of the pulley. It's a very, very important concept. So let's uh, kind of do a walk through here. So, we're gonna grab onto the rope over here. We're gonna start pulling. So we have one unit of tension on this rope. Now this one unit of tension is gonna stay the same until it's acted upon by a force multiplier, okay? So here's our one unit of tension. So right here, we're gonna have our one unit of tension. Now if I have one unit on this side, I'm always gonna have the same amount on the other side of the pulley where the rope exits, okay? Now, on the other side, of, we'll call that the backet side of the pulley where you would clip the carabiner into the prusik, that is where the pulley acts as a force multiplier. So if we have one unit here and one unit up here, force multiplication, we're gonna have two units where the rope grabs, the prusik grabs onto the blue rope. So I'm going to continue with my calculation here. So if I've got one here, this is going to continue down. So I've got one here. I've got one here. I'm going to always have the same amount on the other side where the rope exits the pulley. So you're going to think, well, we've got two units over here because this works as a force multiplier. That's correct, but we never um, count the tension on the anchor when we're trying to figure out the output, okay? Because that would be the force on the anchor that's not going to tell us what the output is. So I'm going to continue down my rope here. So I've still got one unit of tension, but here it is. This is kind of what we've been waiting for. So now we have the prusik that's grabbed onto the rope, okay? That's going to act as this force multiplier. So we now have our one unit of tension with this two units of tension, and that's gonna equal three units okay, of output. So this would be a three to one mechanical advantage system. Once again, we start off with one unit, come to a, a pulley, whatever we have going in on the one side, we're gonna have exiting on the other. So if I have one here, I have to have one on the other side, pulley acts as a force multiplier, okay, on the rope grab. I'm gonna continue along, my one comes down here. If I've got one here, I've gotta have one on the other side. I'll have two units of force to the anchor. I'm not worried about the anchor. This one unit comes down. I've got one unit um, now uh, adding together with my prusik here with two units, that's gonna be a total of three units of output. So the mechanical advantage system here would be a simple three to one mechanical advantage system. The other way to think about a pulley act, acting as a force multiplier, you know, just think about a simple top rope anchor. So if you're down here uh, rock climbing, so here's you and uh, here's your uh, buddy heading up on the, uh, on the rope. 
measure clipped in through um, a top row of anchor here. And uh, really that carabiner is working as you know a pulley. So here's a little carabiner that you run your rope through on the top anchor system. That's an anchor, here's an anchor over here. So think about, you know, if you weigh, we'll say uh, one kilonewton, just to keep the math easy here, it's about 220 pounds of force. So, and you have a one kilonewton climber on the other end of the rope. You know, if he falls, okay, or if you need to prevent him from going to the ground, you know, if he weighs one kilonewton, you have to have the same amount on the other side of the rope, okay, to prevent him from falling, okay? So let's say, um, you know, you got a really uh, big guy with a bunch of gear. So if, if they weigh two kilonewtons, for them not to fall, you know, all the way to the ground and go boom, what do we have to have over here? We've got to have an equal amount. We've got to have two kilonewtons of resistance here. So when the rope goes around, the, the pulley here or the carabiner, once again, that's going to act as a force multiplier up on these anchors. So if we've got two kilonewtons here, two kilonewtons um, on this side, you know, what are we going to see up here? We're going to see four kilonewtons of force. And of course, we're talking all theoretical right now. You know, we haven't considered, um, you know, friction in play here. This is just a theoretical mechanical advantage system. Okay, I hope this helped.